So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the script miner that is coming from PlebSource. So this was spotted at Mining Disrupt, uh, which is a Bitcoin conference or, or kind of a mining conference where it can be all type of miners. But this was in the PlebSource booth and this is the Hammer Miner. So it's a script miner instead of a SHA-256. Limited information on this, obviously, because they're trying to keep it under wraps, but wanted to show it off. We have a couple of pictures that we can get into and then we can kind of see where the chips came from, what chips they're using underneath, what the solo odds are, and a bunch of other things. So just to start off, we have three pictures of it, I believe. So this is the first picture, which shows the LCD. And then we have two versions of it, so two models of it, obviously in prototype. And then we have a more clear picture. So we'll be going kind of based off of this picture and this picture right here. So a couple of things about the hardware. Firstly, it's on a 12 volt system, as you can see there, with a barrel connector. Obviously looking the same kind of design as the Bitax. So a lot of elements taken from that with a script minor chip underneath. You have the voltage regulators, you have the LCD, which is here, normally seen on the Nerd Miners or the Nerd QX, which is a LilyGo LCD. And it has that kind of same dashboard that you would see on a Nerd QX. We have a 40 millimeter fan here with the fan connected up by here. Normally on the bit axis, it's connected down by here. And then the heat sink seems to be slightly bigger than 40 millimeters. Seems to be a rectangular heat sink, just slightly off a square in terms of the heat sink. So kind of the same design as a bit axis that we see, a couple of modifications, but overall kind of the same concept as a solo script miner. So we have our fan RPM up here, which is for this fan, then you have your chip temperature, you have your efficiency, again, kind of like the Nerd QX, you have your watts, your amps, and your volts by there. And then you have your IP address up here, Hammer Miner logo, uptime, which is one hour difficulty or best difficulty. And then you have your hash rate by here. So doing around 118 mega hash, the efficiency is around 220 watts per giga hash. So slightly different in terms of the calculation, but we can compare it to a couple of chips that we know, and we can kind of deduce which chip is working underneath there. As it says here at the pleb source booth, the hammer miner, which is a script miner, normally done on Dogecoin, but you can merge mine with this. So on Bitcoin, merge mining isn't as prevalent, but on script mining, you can merge mine, which is basically where you mine multiple coins at the same time to a miner. Now, I don't know what the configurability is of this miner, but I'm assuming that it can also merge mine. And then we have the stats 118 to 120 mega hash at 26 watts. And we kind of see the same in terms of this miner. So this must be the same miner that they picked up. I'm assuming they only had one at the booth because you can see here the best difficulty is still 6.26 million. And then you have the uptime of two hours and the uptime by here is one hour, same best difficulty by there. So if you're not familiar with script mining, there are a bunch of coins that you could mine. As I said, the same concept for Bitcoin. If you type in SHA-256, you can see all of the coins that you're able to mine using the Bitax. So anything that says SHA-256 by here, you are able to mine with the Bitax. And the same is gonna go for the script miner Anything that's in this list, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Digibyte, which is also on SHA-256, same with Verge. All of these coins, Bell's coin, which was very popular back in maybe six months ago for merge mining with Litecoin and Dogecoin. And then you have a bunch of other coins as we go down the list on here, which you could potentially mine or solo mine with this little miner that you see here. So in terms of the chip use underneath, if we go to minetheasic.com and we click on Litecoin by here, it should show up with all of the Litecoin miners. So we could check on the L9. I don't think it's gonna be under the L9 efficiency. That's what we're basing it off. So the efficiency that you have there is 191 joules per terahash. And on the board, it says 220 joules per terahash basically. I know that the figures are a little bit different by here. But they align to the same calculation. And then you have other potentials like the Alphaplex DG1 Plus, which is actually not a bitmain chip. So the L9 is a bitmain chip. This one does 280 joules per terahash or joules per gigahash. And then 
This one does 220 joules per giga hash. So that could potentially be it, just very efficient. It might be the L9, it's just the efficiency is kind of skewed off a little bit. So you have a worse efficiency just because it's the one chip running on one board. We tend to see that with the bit axes as well, that the efficiency can't get quite down to the normal efficiency without the underclocking capabilities of the bit axe. And then last contender is the L7, but it would have to be very efficient on the L7 chip to actually achieve that. So there might be a lot of underclocking going on if they were using L7 chips, but the L9 has been out for quite a while. So I would assume that they would have gone with the best efficiency out there in terms of the chipset. So if we wanna look at some profitability numbers, we have it loaded up here. I know you can mine whatever coin you want on these, but Dogecoin is probably gonna be the most popular. So a lot of people are also not gonna be mining for revenue, they're gonna be mining for solo odds, which we'll get into later. But the Dogecoin hash rate, 118 mega hash, 26.2 watts of power, and that gives us a mining revenue of seven cents per day. So that's kind of around the same that you would see with the BitAx as well in terms of the BitAx gamma. So I'm assuming that these are the latest model chips that they have underneath because you can still technically make some profitability at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. We could also look at Litecoin, but I know that the revenue is gonna be very bad on that. So we're just gonna stick with Dogecoin for now. So let's get into some solo odd figures right here. If we come down to this website and click on Dogecoin, we can actually type into the calculator by here. So giga hash, this is gonna be in mega hash. So one giga hash equals a thousand mega hash. So it'd be 0 0.118. We don't need to worry about the watts, but it will give us this line of text by here. The Dogecoin network has an estimate of 1,440 blocks per day and the network hash rate of 3.48 petahash with a hash rate of whatever hash rate we have there is equal to a percentage of the network and you'll have a 0.049% chance or 0.05% chance of finding a block in a day. And then if we times that by 365 to give us our yearly odds, it's gonna be around one point, let's just say 1.8% odds per year, which overall it means that you get 100% odds at around the 50 to 60 year mark for this. So if we times this by 60, that gives us 107%. So the odds are around 60 years to actually hit a Dogecoin block on one of these. The odds are gonna be different for each miner. The same thing that we see with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, the odds are gonna be for those lower difficulty coins that are out there. But it also depends on how many blocks the network produces per day. A lot of the SHA-256 coins only produce the same amount of blocks per day as Bitcoin. But with the script miners, the block number per day varies quite often. Also, the block reward varies quite often as well for all of these. So with Litecoin, it's going to be actually harder to mine with this script miner and hit a solo block than it is on Dogecoin because there's less blocks available on Litecoin. And we can show you this right now. So we had 0.049% and we can go to Litecoin, type in the same calculation that we have there. And then that gives us a 0.021%. So we have technically half of the chance that you would have on Dogecoin of hitting a block, you'd be able to hit it on Litecoin. So it's gonna be double that time, around 120 years to hit a block on the Litecoin network using one of these small script miners. So we can also take a look at the difficulty. It does bounce up and down for Dogecoin very often because of the way that the blocks work and how it adjusts for difficulty. In Bitcoin, it adjusts every two weeks, I believe or a certain block number, but it's basically two weeks. But with Dogecoin, it adjusts very quickly on the fly, even within the day. So you can see that there are a lot of difficulty adjustments. It's a little bit different with Litecoin. I believe that it adjusts every two days. So the Litecoin difficulty currently is at 112 million. Dogecoin is only at 54 million. So that's why we see that disparity between the block odds on the network, because Litecoin has a higher difficulty technically on the script algorithm than Dogecoin does. So it's going to be harder to actually hit that solo block. 
And when we actually look at this, we can see that the best difficulty. Now, you have to take in fact or take into mind that they might be mining on Dogecoin. It doesn't actually say any information about what coin they're mining on here, but their best difficulty is 6.26 million. That's maybe around 10 times less than what's required for Dogecoin and around 20 times less for what's required for Litecoin. But that is still a good best difficulty. So we can come over to miningdutch.nl and we can actually see what coins they could have mined with that difficulty right there. Remember, you can merge mine all of these. So if they have a merged logo by here, you can merge mine all of them with Litecoin, Dogecoin, all of that. So you can see Litecoin at the top with 112 million and they had a difficulty, I believe, of 6 million. So anything that's kind of down here, pretty much worthless coins, Digibyte is actually 361. So it technically would be better to mine on Digibyte, I think, than you would be on a Bitax miner at this point. So anything below the threshold they could have mined the block on, but a lot of these tend to creep up into the 20 million range as you keep going up. Dogecoin, obviously at 60 million, and then you have a bunch of other ones like Bell's coin, which is 41 million. And I don't actually know how it works in terms of the merge mining of hitting a block, because if you hit a, it might be something that I might have to read into in terms of merge mining solo. So if you hit a block on Dogecoin, do you also get all of the blocks that you merge mined as well? So it's gonna be very interesting to see when this actually releases. Obviously we don't have a date. If you wanna see it on the channel, we can try and get one after they release and we can start mining with it. I know a lot of people are gonna say that people should stick to Bitcoin mining, but this is just something to play around with like the BitAx and it's more innovation into the technology. I think we're also gonna see a lot more miners come out for different algorithms in the future. Obviously SHA-256 being the biggest one. Script is a natural second biggest algorithm to mine on. So I would assume that Script would come very quickly after the bit X. And then you have a couple of bigger algorithms as well that are sitting below Script that could potentially have a chip underneath there. Same kind of design, just with a different algorithm. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you think about this. And if you would get one, make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.